Hey guys, and welcome back to Superstar Saga. You know, it's nice to go on a holiday, but it's all the more nice to be home. So let's celebrate our return to the Bean Bean Castle Town by getting a new brew from Star Bean Cafe. You just need your caffeine jolt, otherwise you're not going to be able to function for the rest of the day. I know what you're like. <laughs> well, you know, that's Rich coming from the person who downed like a fucking bottle of Pepsi before we recorded, and me sitting here drinking plain old water from my Sonic book, you know? That is completely different. I didn't have a Sonic mug when I drunk that, by the way, so technically I'm the one who's missing out here. Okay, Mr. Man, we're delving deep into the advanced mixes here, like we're combining stuff to go even further beyond in the coffee department. Whoa, big coffee man, watch out! You mix 15 of one bean and 10 of another! Back off! It's not safe! Oh my god! Oh, he turned it into a hover bike, okay. It kind of reminds me of Luigi's Kart in Mario Kart DS, actually. I think it was DS, it may have been 7. You know, if they ever make Egan into like a racer in Mario Kart, yes. they'll probably give him, yeah, they'll probably get him like a Poulter dragster. I, I I can't think of a pun for that at the moment, but it'll be a Poltergust themed car. <laughs> you better eat my Polter dust, bitches. There you go. That's <laughs> actually good. But yeah, I totally like endorse fucking Egan for like Mario Kart, along with Peasley and Cacklera, as I said on Twitter the other day. I think that would be rad. I endorse good mechanics for Mario Kart, but that's neither here nor there. Well, you say that with Mario Kart 8 being the latest and greatest addition to the franchise. My god, the DLC for that game was fantastic! Now, some of it was pretty good. Like, I managed to play- I didn't buy it, but I did play uh, uh, on a friend's copy of it who had the DLC. And, like, the F-Zero stuff and, like, the Legend of Zelda stuff, that was pretty fun, yeah. See, I can make coffee, too, uh... Do a cup of coffee, five cups of cream, four scoops of sugar. There, it's coffee, Jesus. technically. Jesus, like, I, I can't imagine going back to straight sugar anymore. And this is obviously where the Excite bike, like, rider would come in and give you the shit, more of which in a little bit. But uh, I've switched to sweeter tablets in recent years, and, you know, just watch the pounds drop off. And this is a bit of a shameful fact, but it, it will just, like, point out how badly... I was doing in terms of my diet. I used to have like three or four like tablespoons of sugar in my tea. Not, you know, like uh, tea spoons. I'm talking like full dessert spoons here. Jesus, I was in a bad way. That's chicken it up after a while. Like, I remember recently I went to a, a breakfast place and I had actually just eaten breakfast that day because I had uh, lifted weights that morning. So then somebody's like, oh, you want to go to breakfast? Ah, oh, sure, fine, I guess. Oh, double breakfast. I go there and all they have left over is like, uh, they ha they serve cereal, you know, in case I didn't want to get like the eggs or bacon or whatever. So I was like, okay, I'll have some cereal. And all they had left, they used to have multiple varieties of cereal. All they had left was Cheerios. For some reason, Cheerios was the one that won the cereal bidding war here. I don't know what happened, but I take like, I'm taking like five, six packs of the Splenda shit and I'm dumping it into the milk because Cheerios, Cheerios taste like crap. I'm sorry, I don't care if they're good for you, they don't taste like anything. But, that, I like Cheerios, okay? And it hurts me that you would say such like despicable things because they turn the milk a really nice color. But I digress, we're not here to discuss cereal, we're here to discuss Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. So, we're gonna head back to the Sugar Hut Woods. There was actually an area that we didn't get a chance to like investigate and whatnot, but it was actually blocked off by one of those large, for lack of a better word, Cooper guys. So we can now use our hand abilities to knock that sucker down and go even deeper into the woods. And uh, yeah, I forgot to activate the warp pipe in the Chuckle Hook woods last time I was here, so I hope you'll appreciate the little bits and mobs of editing I'm doing in this part, like with the shops. There wasn't really anything exciting that you missed. I emotionally just kind of like fumbled with like buying the same thing twice and having to like resell it and stuff. It was a little bit embarrassing. Well, it's fine, you know, as long as everything runs all smoothly as it needs to be for this playthrough and then we're okay. Oh, I've got to wipe all this shit off. You know, a, a chronicler's like job is never done. Luigi's like, I'm watching your handwriting. Don't fuck it up this time. The cursive is sloppy. Luigi dislikes this. Man, remember when they used to teach cursive in school? I don't know if they did that with you, but they did that with me. Like, they taught us cursive in school 
And to this day, I never understood uh, what some of the mentality was behind some of these letters that they do. Because, like, they mostly usually look like normal letters. But then you get to, like, the cursive Z, and it's like this fucking... It looks like a Q that got in a fight, <laughs> and it was just disabled or something. Because I have... That doesn't look like a Z to me. It looks like some squibble somebody did. Like, are you trying to teach me English or the fucking dwarven language here? You might as well have put runes in front of me. And with how I was taught cursive, like, they wanted to add, like, the fucking, uh, you know, like, little circles, little loops, you know, here and there for certain letters. Man, I write M, cursive A, and I do, like, the laziest fucking T, and, like, the laziest fucking L. I, they're just, like, straight lines. They're not, like, the loops, or that kind of thing. I don't know who invented cursive. I don't know why that became an official thing to do, but I just don't really see the point of much of it anymore. <laughs> We have a new race here. It's a bit late in the game, but whatever, I'll allow it. These are the Winkles. I... That's a reference to a sort of bean, I'm pretty sure. Can you, like, fire Google and check out, like, Winkle or Winkle Bean for me, please? Ah, uh, sure. Let's, uh, take a look here. Well, we're just bouncing blocks in the meantime, anyway, while a, a snail, like, stares us down, gives us the evil eye on the right side of the screen. Winkle beans are handcrafted, American-made, all-natural wooden monsters with interchangeable pieces. No, I thought that was something else. <laughs> it turns out it's a product. Hold on, I'm going to look at the wiki for this kind of shit. Ah, uh, it doesn't really say. Uh, the Winkle page has a picture of what appears to be a slug in a peacock's uniform, something like that. Like some fancy kind of singing dress. I don't know. Oh, they're snails. Okay. Okay. Sure. There I'll go. go with that. See, this is what I was talking about when I said there would be hefty entry fees to come in Superstar Saga. So, we'll pay up. Here you go. I hope you fucking drown this. I hope they crush your skull and you die. Well, if they're made of salt, that'll probably help. You know what's funny is, if you don't have enough, it'll still play that animation. I'm pretty sure they won't take your money, but he'll just say, not enough. Go get more, idiot. I like how in later games, they just kind of, when you have to pay a fee like that, they'll find a way to give it back to you. Because, come on, I mean, like, stealing 500 bucks that could be used towards other ends, you know, that just doesn't seem right to me. Mm -hmm. Alright, it's minigame time. Are you psyched, Hell Dragon? No. Oh. Yep, that's the end of that conversation. <laughs> it's a fun minigame, though. The Winkle Coliseum. Knockback Nightmare. I'm trying to remember what you did in this, but I don't immediately hate it off the top of my head. It wasn't the barrel one, so I guess it's okay. Alright, well, well, we'll let Mr. Like Bottom Left Snail discuss how the Chuckalo or Chuckala bounce, to pronounce it correctly, works. You gotta beat the Chucker Rocks, which are in no way related to the Octor Rocks from the Zelda series, by blasting their attacks back at them. How do you do this? Well, you basically line up the bar, and when the fireball hits it, it will bounce back in that direction. I like how all the Winkles just seem so completely bored by all this, as Juggalo Rocks change color, I guess. Yeah. Like, if there was ever, like, a fucking Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga anime adaptation, I would want, like, a really chill voice to play the Winkles. Yo, man, hit these, uh, check rocks with these rocks. To destroy them, dude, it's alright. <laughs> we'll get, like, Aubrey Plaza to play one of them. I'm trying to remember who that is, but I don't. She was in Parks and Recreation, also in Legend of Korra. Oh yeah, the barrier mushroom. Yeah, you can't take these from the Coliseum. You can't, like, break the game. These basically give you a second chance and, like, stop you from spinning, but they'll also fire out, like, a little blast of energy as well, which can be pretty useful for a counter-attack. I think I don't really had any problems uh, with this minigame. I certainly don't remember doing it more than once, so I guess maybe it was alright to me? Hmm. Well, I had to do, like, more than enough takes for this one, so be thankful for what you get, viewers. This is the best that Ed Tom can muster. Oh, I just noticed that's supposed to be, like, a water effect at the bottom, you know, kind of rippling. Okay. Well, you know, unless... If my sporting event isn't, like, over a pit of water, it's not really worth watching, I'm afraid. You know, football? Nah. Baseball? Get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? No, obviously the best sporting event is fucking American Gladiators. Like, the event where they're on the pillars and they're fighting with, like, the big wiffle sticks, the Q-tips. I love that kind of... I love that show! Like, and then they tried to bring it back a while ago. I don't know why it didn't work. Well, I don't know. American Gladiators is supremely locked in, like, the 80s. 
And I don't really think you can duplicate that kind of magic again, you know what I'm saying? Well, we had the gladiators, like, in the UK as well. Have you heard the theme song to that shit? It's so hype. It's unbelievable. A game show should not have a theme this hype. Yeah, I think I remember hearing about that. I was, uh, of course, the one I remember is da 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 which is pretty hype in its own way. It does get you psyched uh, for the show. So you really don't remember, like, this minigame at all? Oh god, no. I just I just completely slipped my memory, oh, <laughs> honest well, to god. Uh, if I have a criticism for this one, is I feel the hitboxes from Iron Luigi are, like, they're a little bit too skewed in the Octorox favor. I'm not saying there's some, like, you know, gambling going on behind the scenes with, like, the Winkle officials, but yeah, you could start to take a look at the Mario and Luigi substitutes here. Yeah, I think it's because this game is really kind of easy. Like I said, I don't remember really having any problems with it. Like, nothing really comes to mind about it. So I guess they did it just to go, okay, you know, give the Octorox a little bit of a chance. You see, I even said Octorox, even though they're not Octorox. That's how bad it is. Okay, we've passed the required amount, so uh, I, I guess that Beanstar piece is as good as ours. That's why we came here, by the way. I, I didn't just, like, go to bumfuck nowhere to, like, play a minigame and get some, like, coins or beans. Man, I've been to bumfuck nowhere. Nothing is going on there, and I don't know why I went. Oh, yeah. Probably plenty of destinations for your holidays, Benamo. That snail did a lot better than the snail in Undertale when it came to that race, though, I have to say. So I gotta give it props. You gotta stop making Undertale references, mate. You've not played the game. I've made, like, one so far. Or two at most, If, but I don't even remember. That's more than enough. Okay, now that we have the Winkle card, which is a shell, which raises a number of questions, but uh, I'll leave them lying on the ground like so many dead snails for now, we can get past this guy. Well, maybe it's like a business card, you know? Maybe it's like a flat cardboard printing of, like, a shell. You know, they have stylized ones. It's nice to be acknowledged. That's true. I kind of wish I had that going on for me. <laughs> oh, man, it just went from, like, 0 to 70 in terms of depression real quick. <laughs> I don't know, nobody acknowledges Luigi, but he keeps on going anyway. Oh, it's this guy. Yeah, uh, this lady right here. What the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> I think this statue is gathering energy for a final attack. I mean, I know it's the Beanstar. <laughs> oh, purple. You were surprisingly bland in another Baron Luigi game, which I won't spoil, just in case you want to be surprised. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really know. I guess, again, it's because of the lack of the, uh, uh really kind of outlandish animations, which do help Popple stand out more in this game than the other one. Although, when he showed up in the other one, I was like, oh snap, it's fucking Popple! Ah, that's awesome! Well, just to give you a bit of a hint, it's the game that's most alike to Superstar Saga in terms of, like, tone and plot development, in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't really agree with you on that one, but that's a debate for another day. Alright, Popple Round 3, if I'm counting Popple Rounds correctly. He's not too different to, like, the other times we fought him. He has a new move which involves, like, throwing stuff at you out of a bag. I, I, I guess without a rookie, he's kind of running out of ideas here, you know. Just chuck all the stuff I've pilfered. You know, it's a last resort. Yeah, I'm pretty much like Whole Horse. He's a number two kind of guy, and he's most effective with a partner. But right here, you know, as long as you can... Really, the dangerous one is that grab attack that he tries to do where he'll steal your items. Just make sure you know when he's coming and time your hammer appropriately, and you shouldn't have too much trouble. Use Thunder Bros to lower his defense, and then just go to town with a bros attack. Keep that, like, BP high, because you will need it. Okay, here we go. He'll start, like, spamming this now. We've seen this sort of attack before. It's trying to fake you out and whatnot. And he does a pretty good job, like, he'll fling shit up, he'll fling it right at you, like, if you're especially trying to catch these, uh, mushrooms that restore your health, you definitely have to be on the ball and noticing their <laughs> arc. Yeah, I was not on the ball, but, uh, this was, like, my first take, and I beat him, so you know what, I decided to just go over it. Just, I, like, I like kind of the idea that Popple is so not worth the effort that when they do Chopper Brothers, Mario's like, eh, I'm not gonna do the whole motion, and just drops the <laughs> hammer straight down his fucking head. You know, yeah, why expend more energy than is required on a mini boss here? You know, he has his own theme, he doesn't even get to use the boss theme, but then again, the Popple theme is pretty rad. I like how he's throwing, uh, bombettes from, uh, Paper Mario at you. Eh, uh, close, quite close. Oh god, he poisoned me. <laughs> Mario said, damn fear, what the hell is going on? Mmm, that's good four-leaf clover. That's not Mario, that was my, uh, persona, Pario. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. 
Vamario! You don't like vampire in Mario. Yeah, yeah, okay. The joke is done, mate. It is dead as the creatures you're trying to create with words. Uh, well, it's Halloween, so this can't be a Halloween episode anymore, unfortunately. Yes, towards the end of the battle is where I'll start trying. That'll show the viewers how much of a good player I am. Yeah, I'll totally throw them off. Keep watching, guys. What will he do next? Oh, kill Popple, I guess. Well, that was pretty easy. Hm. Yeah, much easier than I remember, actually. Then again, as a child, I always did, like, the jump with both Mario and Luigi thing at the same time. Like, I very rarely did it individually. Well, in this game, it does benefit you a lot more than in the later ones, where you have to be a bit more precise in uh, which brother dodges and wins, so I can definitely see why you adopted that strategy. I need more bip. Not enough bip. You bip? You didn't get enough bip! That's some bip! You're a bip! Stop saying bip! <laughs> we got a beat star piece! Now we should probably send Popple to the hospital, because, you know... It wouldn't do to have, like, two visiting celebrities, like, being on trial for beating up, like, one of the locals. I'm not really sure. I, I think he should be fine. We can just, like, send him to, like, Toad Jail or whatever. <laughs> toad Jail. Yeah, like, extradite him to the Mushroom Kingdom for his crimes against the Mario Bros. I cannot wait until they try to arrest Bowser and then try to put him in a fucking cell. That would be interesting, and I want to see how long that would last. Oh, my power level's, like, starting to leak out. I want an Ace Attorney and Mario Bros. crossover now, doing, like, the Mario Luigi RPG style. I don't, and do not make that game, please. <sighs> well, I guess you're better at hiding your power level, I suppose. Yeah, it's called Apathy. You should try it sometime. <laughs> I would, but I don't care enough. Hmm, I'm feeling like I could go for another coffee right about now. I don't know about you, but I require tasty bean beverages and, like, the tasty treats that come along with them from Egerd. You have not gone to pee for this entire game, have you? You've had, like, what, five coffees now? They're sloshing around <laughs> you. You're gonna explode at this rate. <laughs> Why do you think Mario and Luigi are dancing in battle? You know, that's not because they're hyped up. It's because they really, really need to go to the toilet. I don't know. Maybe Mario got a shocker up the butt again. I don't oh, okay. Know. Less about the shocker, please. All right, what's next? We have... Wait for it, the Chocashino. Uh, I thought you couldn't pronounce that from in there, and I'm sitting there like, all right, let me make sure I can pronounce it correctly. Otherwise, I'll just come off as an idiot. Mmm, magenta juice. It's good stuff. Mmm, bean juice. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> well, what the fuck do you think coffee is? Come on. Well, it's a, it's a particular kind of bean juice, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus. Remember me from a long lost era. Ooh, I used to be cool. Oh, the fucking Game Boy horror. You know, re-recording this game has made me want to go back and play Luigi's Mansion for like the six thousandth time. I fucking love that game. It just makes me kind. Of, man, I, this game basically predicted the Nintendo Direct. I love it, actually. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Although it's making me pine for my Game Boy Color again. I played the fuck out of that thing. I love that little shit. And I kind of miss it now, actually. You know, talking about, like, Luigi's Mansion, which was a launch title, uh, I, I believe in, like, North America and Europe uh, for the GameCube, I just wanted to go back because, man, you you gotta hear, like, the European launch lineup for the GameCube. That was pretty high. Where the fuck is this shit? Uh, we got the Atari Jaguar. No, it went too far, Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> no, I th yeah, I think you went a little bit back. <laughs> Alright, listen to this shit. Uh, actually, let me click back to the video. Don't want to go over time here. Okay. There we go, there's the Great Force. It basically doubles the attack power and also doubles the amount of damage you receive. So it's a good kind of like risky strat sort of thing. But I'll give you like a few of the titles we got at the European launch, which was May 3rd, 2002 for the European GameCube. Uh, we got stuff like uh, Do 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 Do, Crazy Taxi, uh, Luigi's Mansion, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, uh, Rogue Squadron 2, Super Monkey Ball, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, like Wave Race, Blue Storm. And I think like Smash Bros. Melee came out shortly after, so you know I got that shit out launch, and I was a happy Ed Tom 64 that Christmas, let me tell you what. I kind of wanted a GameCube, uh, that never really panned out, but then again, I've said that multiple times, how, uh... <laughs> I don't want to come off like I'm being insensitive here, alright? Shit happens. Oh, and just before we end, the Great Force was based on the Triforce, the Lincoln Force would have shown up. Thank you for watching Superstar Saga, we'll see you next time, bye! <laughs>